All right, so this is problem 280. We're given this bracket and it has a few forces on it. And what we're looking to do here is uh, find the resultant force. So adding all these force, these two forces together, the magnitude of that force and all the uh, coordinate direction angles of the resultant force. So let's get started with that. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I can still see my image here. So let me move that down a little bit. All right, about right there. Okay, so let's make sure you can see that too. Something like that. Okay, let's get started here. So we need to express these first in Cartesian vector notation. So let's start with F1 here. So F1 in the X direction. So if to get the X direction here, how do we do that? All right, well, if we take the cosine of 35 degrees here, that's gonna be the projection on this line here, okay, of F1. And then we wanna project that all the way on to X here. And we know that this angle is 25. So what we could do is cosine of 35, and then sine of 25. So we know the total magnitude is 250, so 250. And that's gonna be multiplied by, let's see, cosine 35 degrees, sine 25 degrees, and that's going to be in the I direction. And then we add plus the y direction, which will be cosine of 35 degrees, and then cosine of 25 degrees. So what I'm doing there here, or what I'm doing here is taking the cosine, and that gets the projection on the, this line, and then taking the cosine of 25, and that should project it on the y-axis there. And that's in the j direction. All right. Um, and then lastly, we need to do the Z direction. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we know that it's 35 here, but it's gonna be downwards in the Z direction if it's pointed upwards here. So we just have negative sine of 35 degrees in the K direction. All right. So this is the X, this is the Y, and then this is the Z. If we want to simplify that, we have, uh, let's see, 86.55I, and then 185.6J, and then negative, 143.39k. So that's that vector. And then F2, then we will, we will do the same sort of thing. So F2, we know the magnitude is 400. So in the x direction, all right, so x is out here. We will do, uh, and we have the direction for that. We have that angle as 120 degrees. So that's just cosine 120 degrees in the I direction. And then we have in the Y direction, we have that which is cosine of 45 degrees, cosine 45 degrees in the J direction. And then lastly, in the Z direction, we have 60 degrees. So that's plus cosine 60 degrees in the K direction. So again, distributing this out, the 400 out, we come up with um, negative 200 I plus 282, let me write that a little neater, 282.84 in the J and then plus 200 in the K. So now we have these uh, 
equations for both f1 and f2. To find the resultant vector, all we need to do is add those two together. So taking f1 and f2 together, so we have f resultant r is equal to f1 plus f2. And if we do that, we come out with negative 113.45i plus 468.44j plus 56.61k. All right, so this is our F1 plus F2. Um, for our answer, you probably want to round these to three significant figures. Now we need to figure out the magnitude. All right, so I'm just going to circle this because this is one of our answers as long as it's rounded to three significant figures. So FR, the magnitude of that is just the sum of the squares of all these components and taking the square root of that. So we have a negative 113.45, that value squared plus 468.44 squared plus 56.61 squared and then all of that take the square root of all of that and our total magnitude then comes out to roughly 485 newtons so that is our magnitude and lastly maybe the most tricky part is the angles all right, it wants the coordinate direction angles. So we have this vector, whatever direction it points. Um, I'm not even going to guess, maybe something like here. And it wants the angles in between this vector and the x axis, this vector and the y axis, and this vector and the z axis. And those are alpha, beta, and gamma, respectively. So all right, so to figure out alpha, we have cosine alpha. This is the direction uh, cosine here, cosine alpha. We would want that to be our fr in the x component divided by our magnitude fr here. So that's what that equals. And all we're doing here is if you have a triangle, right? and we're looking for this angle alpha, right? We know that uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So this is FRx here, and this is FR. I know this is a 3D problem, but this is pretty much what we're doing. Uh, so we have FRx, which is uh, negative 113.45, divided by our magnitude, which is 485.3, if we leave the decimal places on it. And what that comes out to be is alpha comes out to be 104 degrees. So that is one of our direction, uh, coordinate direction angles. Now we do the same thing for cosine beta, and that is just going to be FRY over the magnitude FR. So that is 468.44, 468.44 divided by 485.3. And then we divide that out, take the inverse cosine just like we did here. And uh, beta comes out to be 15.1 degrees. And now I think you get the idea. The last one is cosine of gamma, and that's the resultant in the z direction divided by the magnitude. And doing this and then inverse cosine here, we have gamma is 
0.3 degrees. So that is problem 280.